Ja, ja. Hello, this is Ann and Dennis from GTFO Plan, and we are back in the United States after our two week trip to Panama, Suriname, and the ocean and the Grenadines, all with our good friends Anya and Bartek from sailoceans.com. We had an absolutely amazing time. Our primary goal, of course, with this trip was to build our sailing resume because we are going from a 30 foot monohull to a 50 plus foot multi-hull. Right, and we got that information from one of the insurance agents that we talked to that in order to help defray some costs later on, whether it's having to have to hire a captain or just insurance rates in general, that us having experience in a like-sized boat is, is, is a key part to that. But the other thing too, I think what helped us is uh, live on the boat for two weeks so we could figure out if that's what we want to do, but also we learned some key things that we didn't really uh, have necessarily on a spreadsheet. They weren't necessarily like sail data or, you know, the boat is this long or the boat has an air conditioner. It was more of those creature comforts or something that we learned uh, of how important those things are on a boat. So for both of us, we this is our first time ever sailing offshore. We, for about three and a half days, were 150 miles offshore as we made our transit from Suriname, Suriname River, all the way over to Deep St. Vincent is where we went. Yeah. Uh, it was first for Dennis sailing overnight, and I think we probably have so many ideas for videos. I think right now we're just gonna focus in this video of what we had to do to get the boat ready and to actually do an offshore passage. There's quite a bit to do. For future videos, we're gonna cover things like features, um, that things we've learned about the Neil Trimoran, things that are important to us now having been two weeks on a boat. We're also gonna have videos about, got to see the new Neil 47, we also went on board the Nice and the 550. Yeah, and I think some of the other videos that we have too are the ocean crossing, but also just things that we did in and around the Grenada and the Grenadines in terms of touring the island. Uh, so we'll give you a taste of what your life could be like as well when you execute your GTFO plan. We really didn't question whether we wanted to live aboard a sailboat. We knew that was something we want, but this was the more long-term thing where you actually were making meals and shopping and having to do some re boat repairs on the fly. We did hit a tropical depression, not while offshore, but actually while at anchor. We had some really bad weather and um, we have footage of that. And it really drove home for us. We want a bigger boat. Um, I would not want to be in those kind of seas that we hit on a little boat. Right. I, granted, I know it could be a blue water boat, but the bigger the boat, the more you can handle. You feel, I felt very secure. On their boat, yeah. On absolutely. their boat. Well, on the, I the tied in day. with that, because we experienced that tropical depression in two scenarios. One was, of course, it's got to be two in the morning when it hit. Uh, there was another boat, a charter boat, anchored 100 yards away from us. They ended up having to leave because they started dragging their anchor because they had an undersized anchor. So that really drove well, home the point of... We want to have an oversized anchor for our boat because your anchor is everything. We're going to be living on the hook at anchor 99% of the time. Yeah, so. right. So when you get those 30, 40 knot winds, you want something that gives you that sense of security that's going to hold you in place. Basically, the windlass is what brings up your anchor, so you don't want to oversize so much between your chain and anchor that you overpower your windlass. You have to stay within the parameters of yeah. what your windlass can handle, which is something we really liked about the Nisna. They automatically give you an oversized anchor and extra chain. It's totally great right. for liveaboard. But more about that in another video. Yeah. So more about getting the boat prepped and ready. Mm -hmm. um, when we got to the airport. It was super cool and awesome that there was a driver waiting for us. I've never had anybody standing outside with a little sign that says, and Dennis, get this way. <laughs> yeah. But the funny thing that happened right off the bat, Anne was gonna get in the front, is a little more prone to motion sickness, so being up front is a little better. So she started to get in on the right side of the car, <laughs> which apparently is the driver's side of the car. Yeah. So. Basically, they drive on the left in Suriname. <laughs> we didn't know that. Yeah, didn't know that. 
the driving in foreign countries is always interesting. Yeah, you you're know. flying along and then you slam on the brakes and you come to these speed bumps that are slow, slow you down. And some of them were so bad in the rental car, we bottomed out. Oh yeah, several times. Yeah. And there was no way, to, two ways around it. I mean, you could hit from this angle or from that angle. It's like, all right. Just, yeah, never buy a yeah. rental car yeah. from certain yeah. Hawk because they yeah. get trashed. Yeah. But was other, the other thing, I mean, and it's like, I think a lot of these roads, having been to several, third world countries, it's like they're just wide enough for two cars to pass each other, where, you know, the mirrors are like doing one of those. But then you're also contending with potholes and speed bumps and, and some other crazy nonsense. Road and crazy like road conditions, like very, just a series of sway where waters come over and the road is completely damaged, oh, yeah. obstacle course on a ski slope, but you're in a little dinky car. Yeah. And the AC never really works that well in any, yeah. in the rental car or the taxi. Yeah, um, you want more AC, give them more gas. Yeah, you have no AC when it's running. <laughs> and it wasn't even that good. <laughs> no, it wasn't, yeah. especially in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Sweat box. Yeah. But, so we got to the marina, Waterland Resort Marina. Yeah. Awesome, cute oh, little place. Gosh. Great um, marina, highly recommend it. Yeah, they had a little swim area, they had a little kitty area, you could rent bungalows, all that kind of stuff. Um, and they did, they had one pier, I think they're in the process of building a second one, it's a floating dock because you yeah. need it there, we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, but I think they had maybe 15 boats, tops, yeah, tops. there. Bartek and Anya, they were on the tea dock, but they had another boat just past them that was just basically tied to them. Yeah, so uh, before we took off, that is, we had to boat. actually move <laughs> yeah. that boat. So it was a whole concerted effort between yeah. the marina, other dock mates there. It was really a great place. And the one thing that I think we both learned, so the Suriname River is actually fresh water. So when you have all that growth on your boat from being in the salt water, when you yeah. go to fresh water, it all comes off. It's like free bottom cleaning on your boat. Yeah, yeah. We'll do a separate video on ties, but the ties, at least six feet difference. Yeah, it was a good six feet, and then on top of that. And that, when that water's coming in, when you're holding onto the boat, your legs literally just go straight out because yeah. it's so strong it was, it of a current. It was a three, four knot current. So we had to time our departure on Tuesday to coincide with the slack tide, and also knowing that we had about four and a half hour trip motoring upriver to get to the ocean. Yeah, it, so that's something, being on the Chesapeake where you only have a tidal difference of one foot and you really don't feel that tidal difference. Right. This was definitely something new for us to experience. The only other thing about the, uh, the owner there, Noel, uh, awesome, uh, super uh, friendly, super fantastic. courteous, super helpful uh, in terms of just helping us kind of get oriented since that was our first time ever to, to Suriname. Yeah. We'll definitely be back on our future boat. Yes. We loved it there. Yeah. And a lot of people go to Suriname, from what I understand. A lot of people who want to not go north, Suriname is a popular spot. Yeah. Some of the repairs that we did when we arrived. re rigged the lines, just checked the water, the impeller, the gasket on the water pump. So your impeller the is the part of the engine that you bring in the seawater and that's what cools the engine. It's very, very critical to have a good impeller. Dennis, what are you doing? I am going to help Bartek check and inspect the impeller on the water pump. Since he's a cat, happy job today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's the impeller. It's looking good. Section out. out. If these things didn't go bad so easy, I would probably use the, uh, you know, the, the thing for wires that, that, uh, that shrinks thermally? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's great for the endings. It holds on forever. Yeah. But, but usually it totally outlasts the lines. And it comes in bigger wraps like that too, huh? Okay. It's awesome. Voila. Done all the lines. Spinnaker, forward sails, got them all nice and neat. Here, all the ends cleaned up. Ready to go. Wish chocolate. Wait. Ta da! Oh my god. We're the 
we're the we're gonna de-virginize this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da! Mm. Dig in. Yum. And it wasn't us, by the way. <laughs> mm. Nobody knows anything about this. Oh my god. That's delicious. Worked on making sure the batteries, he was having an issue with his engine starter battery. Mm -hmm. um, so we had to do some battery work. It was he... up. <laughs> 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 yep. <laughs> hey, it happens to the best right, of us. Right, right, right. Is the uh, computer on? <laughs> I thought I was super crafty with fabric, having done sail covers and oh, sail yeah. repairs and cushions. And so I was like, oh, I can replace your, your helm cover seats. No problem. Whew, that was quite the yeah. task. What's it doing? Replacing the cushion covers for the home station. Very nice. Yeah. So what's the process? Uh, unscrewed all the screws from the helm over there, and now I'm taking out the staples to remove the fabric, and then replacing the fabric and stapling it on. Electromagnetic brake, so even if it was windy, it would turn just very, very slowly. Mm -hmm. So you hold on to this for three seconds. And that resets it? And that lets go of electric brake, mm -hmm. and now the thing is spinning. Okay. If it's windy. Right. And see, and right now, instead of off, you got amps and watts that it's putting out, and it's not putting out anything because there's no wind. A lot of the other prep stuff to, to go was disconnecting electrical, disconnecting water. Uh, making sure that you know there's no standing water in the hoses because that's just going to introduce mold or just water that you don't need. Um, well, the just... water pumps too. He worked on the water pumps. He had to do uh, having mm. spares on a boat is key. Uh, and that was something we learned about too. Predominant two brands of engines are Volvo and Yanmar. They're both very good engines, but Yanmar does a better job of customer service or just being. Uh, accessible to parts uh, in remote locations. And also I think the price of parts and service yeah. is significantly cheaper for the Yanmar. Now unfortunately Neil goes with the Volvo engines and I think Outremer does as well. Outremer does as well. Yeah it must be a French thing. Uh, the Nysna and the Sea Wind they go with the Yanmar. We also helped out with the dinghy. Dennis helped bring up the outboard that I was really nervous with you and your back bringing that heavy thing up. The guns. <laughs> Uh, this equation. Okay, clear. Backup. It's not a backup. It, if, if this lets go, it doesn't fly very well. And we got in the dinghy and we helped uh, put on some on and off, which is an amazing product if you don't know about mm. it for the whole of your boat. Just to clean it. Yeah, and we were doing it such a hard way and he had such a simple method. You just take a roller, a paint roller, and you roll it on above the water line. Yeah. And it just makes that yellow grime all yeah. go away. So oh, there was another cold. repair. Uh, up on the central bow of the trimaran, where the anchor hangs, um, when it goes oh, down yeah. and when it comes up, if there's a little bit of chop, uh, that anchor's gonna sway and... This is when you're at anchor. Right, and what, it, what the quick fix that Bartek had put in was, you got a pretty thick piece of rubber stripping, probably about almost two, three feet, mm -hmm. um, that he put up on the, the, the bow so that it would hit the rubber in case it did bang and it didn't yeah. would damage the hull. So we fixed that. We also will do a video of our passage and there we did have some engine trouble underway and we had a whole bunch of learning that we'll show you in a future video. Uh, we um, learned a lot about regarding the Neil is ventilation or lack thereof. In Suriname, it was sweltering hot, and in the tropics, it's sweltering hot, and we really, really need ventilation. Yeah. Sorry to spread this over so many videos. We have so many things to tell you. It's hard to even know where to begin and what to start with. I think we learned so much in terms of what features are really important to us and what right. things we could do without. The other thing, shade. So a helm cover, a helm or a cockpit enclosure, and then the third piece was being able to be dry. Yeah, like Dennis said, I'm very prone to seasickness, so you're probably thinking I'm crazy to want to sail the world, but I know for myself, as long as I have fresh air blowing in my face and I can see the horizon, <laughs> if I can see the horizon, I don't get seasick. That wasn't something we had the ability to do on the Neil 50. Now again, that's a one-off. We would have the ability to do that on Neil 51 mm -hmm. because they have a full hardtop enclosure. Right. But 
yeah, I got, I had one really horrible bout of seasickness. I was fine, but then it started raining and there was no place to go to get out of the rain. Yeah. And then we had a rogue wave. So we had to close our hatch. So it was stifling hot. Yeah. And those are hard things to figure out in a boat show. So we do yep. recommend, if there's a boat you're really thinking about buying, if you can get at least a sea trial on it, but preferably some longer duration sailing on the boat, uh, there it's invaluable. Yeah. It's, it's worth every penny spent, whether you charter or you do something like this where, you know, it's it's just the best thing you can do. Yeah, right. Because you don't want to learn this after you buy the boat. Things you yeah. would want to have and what's important to you. And everyone's list of what's important to them is different. Yeah. The Nice has been around for a while. The Neil 51 and then another one that we really like, um, the C1 1600. They're fairly new boats. I think both yeah. debuted 2017. More about that next time. All right. See you. Likewise. Bye-bye. Say hello bye -bye. To, to Virginia. Virginia is very good. Holland. Holland. Uh, Rotterdam. Holland. Feyenoord. Uh, I think mine looks great on this side. <laughs> Do you feel anything, Virginia? Huh? Do you feel anything? Okay. I'm not feeling anything. Why? Uh, a top Should I? Should I? Oh.